Tapers are just phenomenal. They have a very important role in uh, shaping and maintaining the structure and diversity of the of the tropical forests. Um, they're 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 very effective seed dispersers, so they can play with biodiversity while they're dispersing seeds. And they're known, very well known, as living fossils. So they've been around for a long, long time. The Lowland Taper Conservation Initiative is a long-term conservation program and uh, we've been around since 1996. Uh, we started as a small project in the Atlantic Forest. Um, the initial idea was just, you know, just answer a few initial, initial very basic questions. Um, maybe do a master's or something like that. But, um, but then I quickly fell in love with this animal and uh, what was supposed to be a small short-term program became, you know, a life cause. If we wanted to save tapers, to conserve tapers in Brazil, it would be to expand our reach and um, and go to other different biomes in, in Brazil. So we expanded to the Pantanal, later on we expanded to, to the Cerrado biome and we're now expanding to, to the Amazon. Tapers have been around for 50 million years. They have survived many um, different waves of extinction. So they're very uh, resilient. And now they're, they're facing something completely different. It's, uh, it's a, an upcoming wave of extinction or a current wave of extinction caused by humans, caused by us. We've had several setbacks along the way, but if I have to mention one, it would be when we when we started the work in the in the Cerrado. Uh, we were coming from the Pantanal, this really pristine area, um, and then we moved we moved on to the to the Cerrado, and uh, what we found was absolutely different, completely different, uh, because there is no habitat left. There is you know tiny fragments of forest, um, individual tapers just moving around uh, looking for the resources they need to, to survive and uh, meanwhile getting hit um, by vehicles on the highways, getting uh, poached, getting contaminated by pesticides and, and all kinds of threats that we found in the Cerrado. We monitored 35 different highways for, for seven years and we identified, we recorded um, more than 600 taper carcasses around along the highways. We had, we had this feeling that we were completely powerless um, because we have all these different industries behind all these different threats. Um, if you think about um, roadkill, you're talking about all the um, highway concessions, all the governmental transportation agencies. Uh, we're talking, if we think about pesticide contamination, we're talking about the large sugarcane industry, large soybean industry that we're not, it's, it's not always easy to find a way to, to reach them, to sit around the same table with these people and uh, be able to talk to them about conservation. I'm very optimistic. I think that we're doing the best we can. Uh, we have uh, really, really important partners. We have all this uh, organizations behind us helping us to do uh, what we need to do. Um, we have a phenomenal team, fantastic people dedicating their lives to, to taper conservation. We have some important strongholds for the species, as I mentioned, the Pantanal and the remote areas in the Amazon. And, um, and we're doing the best we can and working very hard for the conservation of tapers outside those areas. So. Um, 
I'm pretty confident that we'll be able to, if we keep working and if we keep paying attention to these animals, um, making sure that we provide them with uh, with all the measures, to all the conservation strategies we can uh, possibly design, I'm 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 confident that they will be with us for the future.